Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I am Dr. Abstract, and we've done 30 tutorials! Wow! So Zim at ZimJS.com is a JavaScript Canvas framework to code creativity. And it's powered by CreateJS, and Adobe Animate exports to CreateJS in the web mode. And so that's how all this works. In other words, you can use all of the things in Zim inside of Adobe Animate. And in the first tutorial, way back when, we're going to do 30 now and kind of take a break. We've done 30 tutorials in the last week or two. Uh, so we'll just take a break. We'll do this tutorial, of course. But way back in the first one, we showed you how to go to the code section here, find the Zim Shim for Adobe Animate. And there's the zip file right there that you can download. And tutorial one shows you how to how to do the selection. We'll actually show you in this tutorial as well, just briefly, because it doesn't take long at all. So in this tutorial, though, we're going to look at emitters. All right. So we've seen some emitters as we've been going along and even played with it a bit, but we haven't looked at it in depth. And an emitter is a very rewarding way to reward people. <laughs> <laughs> arr, arr, arr. So under collections, here's a collection of particles right here. And the menu itself uses particles. So there we are sending copies of particles of the picture that we've got here off into the distance. And we're making it kind of follow the mouse with a sink. So there's this thing called a sink, which is almost like a magnet for the particles. And so they all do that. Isn't that neat? Oh, let's hit the fire. Whoosh. So there's some fire, and we can go whoosh. Oh, look at that, whoosh. And we have a sink up top here, moving back and forth to collect that fire, whoosh. Okay, back in the menu, here are stars. And in this one, we're emitting particles as a result of a function. So every particle that we make is a result of a function. And the function is what is making these stars. So there they are. There's also a sink in there. It has nothing to do with my mouse. There's a sink that is animating along that's wiggling back and forth. And the snowflakes tend to fall towards that. We also have the snowflakes falling from the top rather than from uh, the middle. So here's an example of a sink right here. There are the particles uh, emitting. And then they're coming back towards the sink, which is right about there. Isn't that cool? Uh, here, we were shooting fireworks up, and there's a firework of particles. Cool. So that's a particle emitter, and this is a particle emitter. That one has lines, and this one has particles. Oh, that one has lines, too. Sorry, this one has lines, and this one has particles. Yay! So we're randomizing the colors of the particles, as you can see there, and whether they're lines or not. Cool, huh? Uh, with the classic fireworks. Now this one is animating a whole bunch of things falling down, including a little logo at some point. And so there's that type of effect. And this one also has a sink, which is heading out and then pulling all those particles back into the middle. And note that we have no gravity. So those are examples of particle emitters in the particles collection, but we use particles throughout almost you know, half of these things have particles. So for instance, here is an e-learning quiz. Move and that was a particle the right there. Animal. Um, the, as we did our transitions, we ran a particle emitter at the side that's actually built right into Zim Pages. So we want an alligator. Oh, alligator. We want a hippo over here. Oh, we did it. Particle emitter, right? Play and the here, sound. play the sound. And press the matching animal. Okay, I will. Butterfly. Hmm. Ah, oh, stars. So there we're emitting. And if we emit all like uh, a whole bunch all at once with the same force, it will make kind of a Lady ring. Bug. Ladybug. But what we do is we emit the forces at different forces, like a random between, say, 1 and 10. And then they all emit with different forces and they go out to make the to fan out in a sense. You can also emit over time, obviously, the interval that's the, the default. Well, let's get out of this music, huh? <laughs> um, Alrighty, we could have turned the music off. Where else? Let's go down into the code pens and see. Oh, look, this one has an emitter on it. Whee! Isn't that cool? So the emitter is following the, the whatever that is, roller coaster along. Whoa! And emitting. How spectacular is that? Oh, so much fun. <laughs> okay, so that uh, is another example of emitter. And I've also done emitters that 
are, well, let's see, how would you call them? I guess a bit uh, more planned. You know, you, you work on it a lot. Let's see, that's an emitter of all those things. Oh, here's one right here. This one has rings. So look, the rings are getting wider and then narrower. So that's a particle emitter that is emitting in behind there. All right, super. Why don't we go take a look in Adobe Animate and see what we've got there. Yeah, sound good? Okay, so we'll make a new preset here. Or, well, not a new preset, but a file from a preset. And create. <laughs> I can do that every time I start. And new preset. Oh, wait a minute. A file from a preset. So that's an F9 we got going on here. Here's that importing that I mentioned. So we go under more settings, under HTML, and import a new template. And then we would go to the Zim Shim folder. So this is the zip file that we would have downloaded. And there it is right there, the Zim Shim. So we can bring that in. We also had some things that we changed in the basics. And so in the end, we stored what is called a profile. Uh, and we're going to import that profile that we stored in the very first lesson. So that gives us our Zim Shim. It also gives us these check marks, three check marks here, and we're ready to go. That's really all the setup was. And now we can use Zim. And so, well, let's save the file. File save as, first of all. And we'll do it not for that, but actually number 30. Wow, 30. And this one will be called the emitter. Emitter has one M and two Ts. All right, so bring back that F9. Make this a little bit bigger for us so we can see. And we will call this uh, with a comment, Zim30 and emitter of particles. So you may have heard of particle emitters before and sometimes they can sound a little bit scientific and scary or whatever. Um, but are you ready? We teach the, the kids how to use an emitter because new e new oo emitter the new emitter dot center oh how's that ready <laughs> okay control enter and ta-da <laughs> so you know well it's not not all that difficult is it and so what we're emitting here are three different color circles i guess um, green blue and pink circles are randomly emitting. There's gravity that's going down. Note that they they um, shrink, so they shrink as they as they leave their life. <laughs> they shrink and they also fade out. So by default, shrink and fade are set to true, but you can turn those off. And there's gravity, and that's what we're going to do in this tutorial is take you through some of the features of the Zim particle emitter. Okay, so that's an emitter. First of all, there's the particles that we can emit. So if we emit a new rectangle, rectangle like that, that's just a default rectangle. And go control enter. There we are emitting a bunch of rectangles. Uh, and how we did it so that those, those um, rectangles were different colors is we might say uh, I don't know, 50 by 50. And then in here, we could, could emit a color, red but we can also emit an array of colors, red, green, and blue, for instance, and go control enter. And now we're emitting, it looks like smaller rectangles at that. And so by default, it's also in the center, but you can specify an axis like a horizontal or a vertical or along a line. And also if you do that, then you wanna specify the width or the height of the emitter so you can specify that as well. So if you make a width of only 100, then it's going to emit down from uh, 100, or it might shoot in any which direction. So uh, direction is based on the force. So uh, I don't know what the, uh, the uh, I guess the force is just sort of randomly shooting out. I'm not sure what the default is. But, uh, and there's also um, gravity. So these are uh, a few of the things that we'll want to think about. Right now, we've just put in regular parameters there, but let's drop it down into the Zim Duo technique, and then we can um, sort of uh, look at any one we want at any time. So the object that we're emitting is the rectangles. Well, I don't know if I want to emit rectangles forever. 
and then we can deal with some other things here such as uh let's see what would be a good one let's turn the gravity off gravity colon zero so now there will be zero gravity in our emitter and we go control enter so now the emitter just sort of shoots out as you can see and it doesn't these particles don't fall down uh, another thing that you might want to look at is the interval. So interval is quite fast. Uh, if we set an interval of even 0.5 seconds, you'll see quite a big difference. So here is an interval of 0.5 seconds. Okay, so every half a second we're getting a particle that is emitting out. And there's also the life. So the life of it is something that you can change. So if we set the life to 3, then we get something that looks uh, quite different in that it lasts for longer. See how it's shooting off the page even. And we don't see it decaying, we don't see it shrinking because it's lasting for three seconds. So if we don't want to shoot it as much, we can adjust the force. Force, colon, how about a force of one? And let's see if that makes a change. Yes, it does indeed. So now we're only shooting out with a force of one, and so they're moving more slowly. And then we're also seeing the decay in there. We can shoot in at an angle. So here's angle. Golan, if we say zero, let's see where that shoots. Kind of looks a bit silly, doesn't it? So now it's shooting all of our particles out at an angle of zero, and you can see them decaying and fading. Let's, let's increase that a little bit. Um, how about uh, we'll set the interval back to point. Uh, I think the default is actually 0 0.01. So let's do that. Well, that's a lot of particles being made all shooting along. <laughs> Look at that. And then decreasing down there like so. Uh, so we, we want a bit more force. So one thing we can do is, uh, well, if we had a force of 10, let's just see what that would look like. Oh, wow. So all, there they all go shooting out. Um, we can use these zim v values. So a zim v value is things like a min of, um, say, minus 10 and a max of 10, for instance. So you see how we've put in a range there. And now um, we'll get uh, the particle emitter shooting out at random angles like that. Oh, and already it looks cool. That looks like some sort of jet propulsion that's happening. So if you put a rocket here, that would look pretty cool. But remember, we're only emitting rectangles. We could emit anything we wanted, really. Uh, just close these guys down. And so we did it there. And we can also do that with the force. Um, we could do it with you know anything in here. Um, let's bring back, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's change the angle a little bit to go up instead of, uh, let's make a fountain, you know, like a fountain of stuff. So right now you saw that zero is to the right. So basically minus 90 is up. So now we're going minus 90, which is up, minus 10, and then minus 90, which is up, plus 10. So this will now be shooting upwards. And let's bring back gravity as well. So we'll make it a force of five. We'll bring back gravity coming down. And then we get a little fountain like this. So there it is shooting up and then falling down. So it shoots up and then the pieces fall down. So how can we adjust that to be a little bit nicer, maybe more of an angle? What do you think? Uh, so minus 30 and 30. And not only that, but how about with different forces? Right now, everything is shooting up at the same force. So if we went kind of like a force of with a min of 5 and a max of 10, then we can see what it looks like when we randomize the force. Oh, you didn't see that at the beginning. Let me refresh it. Whoosh. So there are all the particles. And at this point, we might want to move the particles down a bit rather than centering them. Um, but look at that. There they all are shooting up. But it's kind of 
odd that they're not rotating, don't you think? It's sort of like they're they're shooting up. Let's move it down a bit uh, so we can center it and then dot move in a relative, uh, zero in the X, and how about down 200? So there it is down, maybe 100, I don't know. But let's make these things, uh, first of all, the size of the particles actually change how much the force act on them as well. So if we make the, 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 the particles smaller, say 30, then we're also going to see, I think that's the case anyway, but there go a bunch of particles boom, shooting up like that and then coming down. Oh, but they're not rotating yet. All right, so let's rotate them. And how we do that is with, uh, there's a couple different ways. We can say animation, colon, and in here we make an animation object, which has a couple things, props. So here are the props that we're going to animate. And if we want rotation, colon 360. So we'll make them all rotate to 360 and a time of whatever one is probably good. Maybe we could bring the life down to two and make them rotate to 360 in a time of two. Okay, and a comma, comma. Ready? So now they're all shooting up. I'll refresh again, shooting up, and they're all rotating to 360, but uh, we might want them to rotate a random um, sort of amount. So instead of going to 360, we put in here the Zim V value of say minus 360 comma, oh, sorry, min of minus 360 to 360 max, max. 360, there we go. And am I, have I got the right number of brackets? That bracket matches that one. Okay. I think so. Okay, and control enter and let's have a look. Bring it back. So now they're rotating randomly. Some of them aren't rotating very much at all. Some of them are rotating uh, faster than others. And we definitely have a fountain of, of uh, confetti kind of stuff, huh? All right, well, um, let's see. What do we want to do next? Uh, the one thing is that um, I think we can adjust this a little bit. The problem is, is some of those are near zero and therefore they're not rotating. So how could we do it so that they're, they're not? The way we do that, I believe, is do something like min 180 to max 360, say times three or something like that. So it's gonna be rotating at least 180 degrees to a max of 360. And then we, I have to look this up, I can't remember it. I know in random, so that's very similar to the Zim Rand. If I go Rand like that, oh, that's seed Rand, seed Rand count, here's Rand. Okay, it's called negative. So uh, random numbers, a min and a max basically, whether we want integers or not, and negative. And I believe that the Zim V value, so if I look up pick here, that probably will tell me. So here are picks, and these are all of the different values here. So what we could pass in are, uh, or is, are, yeah, an array. So we can, and it'll pick randomly from it. A min max value, range object, plus integer and negative. There we go. I thought it included integer and negative. So if we say negative true, then what this will give us, so inside here, comma, negative, colon, true, it will give us between 80 and 360 times three, either positive or negative. Ah, woohoo! So we can go kadoom, 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 like that. I'm not sure you see a difference, but basically now they're at least rotating 180. So these things are all at least 180 degrees happy. <laughs> all right, and some of them are going uh, quite a bit more and that brings some life to the confetti. You can say how you want these to rotate, right? Or how, how you want the particles to appear. Do you want the particles always to appear at the bottom? Do you want the particles always to appear at the top? Or do you want to the particles to appear uh, randomly kind of in between the top and the bottom of the particles? And that will affect kind of how you see the particles as they shoot up. I mean, you probably won't be able to tell, but I believe that this is in the random. And often what you'll do is you can hide where it gets created, uh, like behind the object, and then it it may seem more natural because it's a little bit awkward to have these particles just appear from nowhere. It's not, not the end of the world. Most of the time we don't notice. 
All right, so that's um, that's some some extra things there on the animation. Uh, what else could we show? Oh yeah, we wanted to show that sync, uh, didn't we? And there's also animating based on lines, and there's animating along a line. So rather than drawing particles, we can draw lines. I'm not sure if we'll get to that in um, in this tutorial, but I can show you where you can find out more information. You can just look at some of the um, the other examples that we've been looking at there. All right, uh, what would be good to show you now? Ah, right. What if we don't want, this is very important, what if we don't want to emit particles all the time? We just want a reward, <laughs> you know, like, hey. Okay, so how you do that is you usually plan your emitter and you say, okay, I'm all ready with my emitter. Great, I, I like how it looks. Then you go like this, um, start paused, duh, colon true, like so. All right, and that will start the emitter paused. And then at some point, such as uh, like when we go something like stage, or I can use the letter S, stage dot on, stage mouse down. Sorry for that, a little bit lengthy, isn't it? Let's create Jess's name for it. Um, so when we stage mouse down, let's put the emitter. So we'll give the emitter a name here or a variable, const emitter. Emotter. How about uh, reward is equal to that new emitter? Then we will say reward dot loc at the frame dot mouse x and frame dot mouse y. So that will place the emitter at wherever we pressed on the stage, and then we will dot spurt the emitter. Woohoo! So let's spurt it, I don't know, 30 or something like that. Are you ready? So we go control enter, close down some of that, and there's the stage. And are you ready? Bum, bum, bum. Ah! Cool, huh? It's like, oh, am I ever magical? Look at me uh, spurt that thing. Now, when we do that, it, it's all kind of shooting up. I'm not sure if that's what we want. If we wanted it all shooting to the right, we could make like a little space gun or something or something, who knows. Um, so at the moment, remember we've got our angle on there. If we were to take off the angle, just comment that out, then we might get a more natural sort of spurting. Well, I don't know, that's okay. You see how that's kind of shooting out like that. Um, the other thing that can make a difference is how many are we going to spurt at any one given time? So if we say num colon five comma, then what will happen is it will spurt five at a time and it'll be almost like more of a burst. It will still spurt 30 particles, but it will be in bursts of five over that speed. So watch this. I don't know if you'll see the difference. You see that? How it, it's like a burst now of five at a time are, are shooting out there. And therefore we might want to reduce the force a little bit, kind of go one to five on that maybe. And let's see how, how that looks. Uh, it's not bad, okay. So it's not shooting out quite as much. It's more like a happy burst at that time. Woohoo! Uh, remember we said it looks often nice on dark. Why don't we change this to a black and we can set the outer. So here we have a famous F for frame. We have S for stage. We have W for stage width, anytime we want to use that. And we have H for stage height, like that. And we'll comment these out. So if I want to change the color of the frame, I would go F dot outer pewter outer color is equal to dark. Ah, okay, that's good. And control enter. Now uh, my stage is black and my outer color is dark, which is the same with my browser. Ah, ooh. Do you like? Isn't that cool? Um, so that's the emitter and it's spurting whenever we want to and we're spurting at the place of the mouse. Um, if you're spurting at some other place, like um, at an asteroid, you can say loc at asteroid. 
Um, it might have been nice to make some physics with contact. And so anytime a ball contacts the ground, we could uh, you know, bounce it around and stuff and we could have little particles emitting as the, that ball bounces uh, along the ground. That would be cool. We did a badge. So there's your Zim badges, let me just show you. Um, under the learn section, we've got Zim badges. Let's see, where do we find those? That's school, articles, Zim tips, synth, basic levels. There's, they're right there, here, I know I'm looking at it. So badges, art, game, app, and physics. Let's see, I think our game actually used a lot of emitters. Oh yeah, look at this game for a second. Hello. Oh, we have to hit something. The Come on, hit something. Okay, well, that was an emitter at the end, but I think we hit something. Here. Oh, oops, I you hit see something. that little emitter? Oh, I see. Let's it's do the it crystal again. cloud. City of millions. Whoa. Oh, oops, I see that something. little emitter? Oh, I see. Ah, and a little okay. emitter? So you have to use your mouse or a key. Okay. So that was a physics game that has little emitters in it. And all of the steps to build that are right here, starting with the template. We teach you uh, to, to do things. There's adding the physics, there's making the cloud. So we don't let you copy that. You've got to um, uh, type those out to get your badge. And so that's badge one. Badge two, you get to do something else with physics. Badge three, et cetera. And then eventually you'll get to an emitter somewhere down in here is the emitter. So that's in badges. Um, that's not even the one I was thinking of. I actually was thinking of the physics one right here, which had um, some cool emitters happening. Let's see if uh, we can find that. Uh, click. Hello. Welcome to the Zim badge. Flakes happen. Oh, so yeah. There it is. Uh, so we're using this. physics, we and every time these balls hit down As here, we've got little star this. emitters. Well, this was for a holiday thing. <laughs> Looks like quite a mess, doesn't it? For the first uh, time. Okay. So anyway, that was uh, emitters in uh, physics there as well. Um, so anything else that we can do here? Oh, we were going to do the sink. All right. So let's see. How can we show a sink? What would be the best way to do that? Mm, well, let's go to the docs and take a look and see what would be uh, needed for a sink. So we'll go to Zim and hit docs and type in emitter. So the way the search works in Zim, I don't know if you noticed, is it will search any of these main words here, not, not all of the parameters. If we search the parameters, it would just be a mess. There are ways to do a full search text. So if you go control F, that's a full text search and it will search anything that you're looking at. So that's one way to search all the parameter names. But this search only searches the names uh, there. You can also hit text for a full text search. Hit text and it's like the text of the whole docs all in one uh, file that you can then do a full text search on. Anyway, we're going to the emitter. So in other words, if you um, uh, did a search on spurt, it wouldn't find it because spurt is inside of the emitter. So you have to know to go to the emitter. You'd have to do a full text search on spurt if you wanted to find it. All right, so coming on down, I'm wondering if one of these, so here's an example of a sink. We've got some particles, interval, life, decay. There's sink and sink force right there. But then what is the sink going to be doing? So there we have placed the sink. So tell you what, um, the last tutorial was quite lengthy. So why don't we just grab this code right here like that and we'll we'll make some adjustments to it because I do want to wiggle the sink as well. And let's paste it into here then, like so. And we'll comment out the previous uh, example in a sense here. Comment selection. Yeah, although we will leave the frame.outer color. Okay, so what have we got? We've got a sink, which is a new circle. It can be any object. We're center regging and setting its alpha to zero. So that means the sink is going to be in the center of the stage. And why don't we see it? So rather than alpha of zero, we'll set that to one. Then we're making our emitter here. 
the objects we're going to be emitting are circles, rectangles, and triangles. Okay, that look like they don't have any color. They just have a border. All right, so that'll be interesting to see. And then we're randomizing, oh, the colors of these. Do we really need to? Maybe that's why we didn't bother with color because we're setting random colors, but we could have put just, this might've been an older example with ZimV, we can just put the random colors in there. But you can randomize any property uh, which can be handy. So every particle that gets made, if you put random here and put what property you want to randomize, then you can choose, uh, for instance, colors there. All right, we've set our interval of 0 0.02. Ah, that's the default speed interval of 0 0.02, a life of five. So it has a longer life. If we want to see how the, the sink is interacting with it, we'll want to give it um, a longer life. And its decay time is uh, one. So that will decay at the end. What it means is it will live this long and it will decay over one second. We're telling it to that the sink is the sink right here. So that means please go to that sink. And we're giving it a sink force of 0.5. That means it will tend to go towards that sink with a force of five. We're giving it no gravity and a small force to begin with. We're caching, uh, it'll cache on mobile. I'll just leave that off, that's, that's default anyway. And then we're centering the registration point. We can probably just center it and scaling it to be twice as big for some reason. Okay, control enter. Let's have a look. Oh, I recognize this thing. So, wow, okay, so that's that example. There it is heading towards a sink in the middle. Cool. All right, so let's uh, see what else we can do with that sink though. What I would like to do is rather than have it in the middle, I would like to put it up above at the top. So we're going to move our sink to pose it at zero from the middle for now and say 50 down from the top. We're going to give it an alpha of one so we can see it. And this will be from the center like that. And the top is the default. So there will be our sink up above this time. And when we go control enter, uh, the particles go up and we can see how they're sort of floating up towards the sink. Cool, huh? Do you like that? Okay. Um, it might be nice to get a bit more focus. So can you imagine how we could get them to come out and then really, instead of just sort of heading up, really go to the sink more? I'm not sure. We could make uh, the force, let's see, the force is kind of going everywhere. Um, we can make the sink force, oh, sorry, that that's the force going everywhere, but we can make the sink force a little bit bigger. Let's see what happens when we do that. So now the sink force is bigger and it is indeed focusing the particles on that. Maybe we could shoot, the, I don't know, what will happen if we make the force a bit bigger? How about a force of five? Well, that certainly didn't do it. Now the force is shooting out everywhere and we can't even tell what the sink is doing. So that's probably not what we want. What if we made the force of the sink really strong though? Uh, force of 50. <laughs> No, no, I'm not even going to show you that. That was a mess. Oh, that's the force of 50. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, what was the force? The force was five. I was trying to make the sink force. I was going, what the heck is it doing? It just like shot up in the air. Oh, okay. Whoa, I did not expect that. Ready? Look at that. It's like, okay, it shoots past, but then it comes back. It's like these things are buzzing. And it's made an atom. Oh, that is so cool. Right? We got this atom going around the sink now. Woo! If we moved everything down, it would be an atom that's more in the middle, wouldn't it? So center reg. Uh, I'm not sure why we scaled everything twice as big there. Um, well, I'm going to leave it. Uh, dot move. And we'll move it zero in the X and move it, say, 200. And then our sink, we won't put up quite as time, 150. And let's see what we've got. So we'll refresh here. There it shoots up and then it comes back. And okay, it's kind of creating, <laughs> kind of creating an atom. But that, that wasn't what I was intending. Um, but that's sort of neat to see. And so I'm reducing now the forces. Let's make it a force of just one. 
we'll make the, the sink force um, three. And let's have a look and see where we're at. Okay. So that's probably pretty good. We've got these things coming out. They're he definitely heading towards the sink. There is even some life is long enough that it is curving back towards the sink. But what I want to do now is move, wiggle the sink back and forth and see if these sort of wiggle like a snake almost or something. All right. So are you ready to wiggle the sink? That's the sink right up here. And we're dot posing it and setting the alpha to one. At the moment, we can see the sink, but eventually, once we wiggle it, dot wiggle, two Gs and an L and an E. When we wiggle, we'll wiggle the X position um, and we will start it at its current X position. So that will be, if it's centered, the width divided by two. And then we want to wiggle at least 100 and up to say 600 and then in the time it will be how about from 0.5 seconds to two seconds um maybe let's try slower let's go one to one to three seconds or something like that okay so what we've got here is the uh, property the prop the start the min the max that we want to move that property and or change that property and then we have the time min and time max okay so we'll see the circle wiggling which i do there it is wiggling whoa and look at the particles trying to follow it <laughs> okay so we may have ah, ah, beautiful so if these were little bubbles i i kind of thought it would be nice to see just I thought we were going to only see the rings. So let's let's just do an adjust on that. We won't bother randomizing the color at all. We will make it the rings. We won't make them darker, though. So let's make them light. And this one we'll make light, too. And this one we'll make light. Although if we wanted to randomize that, one thing we could do is say const colors is equal to uh, light, lighter, um, white even and silver sliver silver and moon and fog <laughs> there we go so there's some random kind of light colors and there's also mist and maybe a few more in there but if we then say color right here copy that copy paste paste there we go with the two border all right and we go control enter Ooh. <laughs> they all kind of go whipping over towards the sink. Oh, nice, huh? And if we don't see the sink, then we really don't know what's going on. Let's try making the angle more specific as well. So right now, um, how about we go, it's all tabbed in the wrong place. I think. copied it from the docs. Okay, so um, angle. Which way should we make the angle? Up or down? Let's make it up. Minus 90. Let's just see what it, what it actually looks like if we sort of for, uh, put it towards that way. I also, uh, life can be a little bit shorter probably. I don't think we need that life. The interval could be maybe a touch longer, maybe uh, 0.05. Decay time's okay. Yeah, all right, let's uh, run her. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, hang on, I'm just gonna get rid of a few of these things. Oh, there are tons of them. Okay, let's have a look. Near, 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 near. All right, let's move this down to the very bottom. And I think I like it when it's wiggling a bit faster. So we take our wiggle up here, and maybe that's a little bit too much. Uh, and how about we go 0.5 to 1. So there's our 0.5 to 1 wiggle. We're going to move this to the bottom, which means we could... Uh, okay, I guess I'll just move it down a bit more, like this 300. And what do we got? 
All right, so we're getting a little bit more of a wiggle out of it. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe, is that, is that too fast? It's hard to tell. Let's take off the, off the sink. And maybe we want gravity. Let's add a little bit of gravity. Let's make the sink force a bit bigger, 20. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Oh, 10, maybe 10. So it's a sink force. We've got a bit of gravity pulling us down, or a fair bit of gravity pulling us down. Uh, the moving's good, and I'm going to hide the particle. Alpha, zero, and control, enter. Whoa, all right. That I kind of did not expect. So we've got too much gravity. See, it's pulling it down, but it's almost stationary. Whoa, that's neat, because they're equal. So what if I bring up the sink force a little bit, maybe lessen the gravity a little bit, eight, and then what do we get? Whoa, geez, look at that. <laughs> so what's happening is, oh, that's, that's kind of freaky looking, isn't it? What's happening is the sink is pulling it fast. It goes past the sink, and then the sink pulls it back down again or gravity pulls it back down again. I don't know, it might, might relate to the life of it. Perhaps we should lower the life of it, but that's a, that's a pretty twisty, windy thing there. So if we go with a life of two, then we get this. Sorry, just a sec. Closing these other emitters. Huh. I like, I like it when it gets a little tail. You know what I mean? Where, where, where it looks like it's a whip or a flame or a tail or something like that that's going. So what uh, a life of 1.5 maybe. We can also in decrease the de decay time maybe to 2 to match. Let's see what that does. What happens if we don't fade? So fade colon false. Let you see it this time. I, last time I was the only one who saw it. Neat. And if we slow down the sink, I, I think it might be more hypnotic. That's kind of like whipping along there. And to slow it down, we change this to say, how about a one to a two? It's not as curvy anymore. Yeah, I don't know. It's not quite as curvy. It's going a, a little bit wide. Uh, the other thing to do, possibly, that might be interesting is don't just wiggle it in the X, but let's also wiggle it in the Y. So here's wiggling in the Y. Oh, <laughs> wiggle in the 7. Wiggle in the Y. The So this is a starting point height. No, this is, what, what was it starting at? 150. So 150, and we're only going to wiggle it a little bit, about 50 to 100. Uh, maybe we should start it at 200 here, down, and we'll start that at 200. Okay, and I'd like to make that a little bit faster, so 0 0.5 to 2. Okay, let's see what happens. looks like now. Whoa, cool. All right, so now what it's trying to approach there is the following. When we bring this back up to one, you can kind of see what's happening to the ball. So it's coming down like that as it wiggles, and, and these things are constantly trying to find that. What if, what if the life were longer? Would we like it to wrap back around? and? Have we been here too long? I mean, as you can see, <laughs> this is a lot of fun, huh? But it does take some patience to try and fiddle with these things until you get the effect that you want. I actually don't know um, exactly what effect I want. One thing I could try is what if we put num of five of them out there? Uh, if we change the force to be a little bit random, so rand mm, 10 to 20. Oh, uh, no, that's not how it's done. It is min of 10, max of 20. 
like that on the sink force. The angle is always pointing directly out. I'm not sure I like that, but uh, we'll give it a go. And I was gonna increase the life of this to about four with the delay time of four. And are you ready? Boom, punching, boom, boom. And it breaks. We did something wrong somewhere. F12. We min of so the sink force a min of 10 and a max of 20 maybe the sink force isn't uh, zim v let's just try bringing that back to 10 and see what happens because what happened is all the particles went up to the top i have a feeling that sink force might not be zim v whoa yikes that's kind of spooky looking isn't it And if we bring back the color of these things, so the color could be, it almost looks like a structure now. Green dot darken, green dot darken 0.5 on each of these. So we'll make these things kind of like this greenish shape, a greenish color. Now we get this strange looking plant <laughs> now, now I'm not sure I like the uh, the white outlines or all the all the light outlines, uh, right? So we could just grab these colors and take them away, with uh, and the borders, and just make a a structure out of it. Those structures, okay. Let's get rid of the uh, the alpha on that, and we have perhaps what is a final project or product. Some sort of weird tentacle arm. <laughs> oh man, it's whipping around. Wow, that's sort of cool looking. We could make another one too and have uh, have a few of them there. But um, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure we could continue to play around with that, but that's that's pretty cool. I I, I like the tentacle arm. Let's close all these emitters down. The tentacle arm. Whoa. All right, so did you have fun playing with the emitter? And this was the final tutorial <laughs> in this batch, I guess we could put it, who knows. Um, please find us on YouTube. Well, I guess that's where you've been watching these and give some likes to these. That would be very helpful. Share them with others as well. And you might want to mention them in various forums. Uh, we put a lot of work into Zim over the last 10 years, eight years or whatever, obviously. And this can hopefully really help you in the products that you make. Um, so I am Dr. Abstract. <laughs> All the time I've been saying that. Here we are looking at some code. <laughs> we didn't do a summary of the code, but I, I think we've had quite enough here. Uh, we're approaching an hour. So let's just pop on over to uh, this little view here. Dr. Abstract, very happy, happy to be here with you, and hopefully you've enjoyed these tutorials. Okay, you're welcome to join us, zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. If you're still listening to this and watching this, then surely you must be interested. Come and hang out with us. We'd love to say hi to you. Do not be shy. All right, have a great day or night. Uh, cheers. Bye-bye. Also, make sure that you look at the Zim Learn section for many more tutorials. All right. And just remember as well that we've been showing you these tutorials in Animate, and that's great. You can use these in Animate. However, we often will build in Zim, for the most part, um, just in Zim itself. And there's ways to do that back on the code page. You can grab a template, and in the Learn section, it will show you how. But of course, uh, working in Animate is the best of both worlds. Ah, how about that? Okay. Cheers. Bye-bye.